Once upon a time, I was a liberal. Well, to be honest, less than a year ago, I was still a liberal. I became a liberal because I felt I had found a tribe whose values align with my own. I reject tyrannical groupthink. I reject a system which allows an ambitious, misinformed, and dogmatic mob to suppress free speech, create false narratives, and apathetically steamroll over the truth. I reject the acceptance of junk science and superstition to advance ideological agendas. These are the reasons why I became a liberal. And these are the same reasons why I am now walking away. He also describes Brandon Straka that uh, he happens to be a hairdresser in New York City who happens to be a homosexual and that this is part of the reason why he feels like he was just cast uh, as a Democrat and really given no choice. And so he started the hashtag walk away, the walk away movement on social media. He published this video on May 26 and millions of people have viewed it across several different social media platforms. The Epic Times reports that since Straka published his video, his life has been, quote, overtaken by a tidal wave. And that's where we want to welcome in Brandon Straka himself, the guy who started the walk away movement. Brandon, thanks for being here. I didn't know you started the movement, and the other day I actually tweeted, wow, the walkaway movement, I hashtagged it, is pretty remarkable, and it's gaining steam. You're making a tremendous impact on Twitter. You're making a tremendous impact in general. Did you expect it when you published the video? Well, I didn't exactly know what to expect, but I can tell you that it is uh, meeting all of what I hoped it would do. I mean, I dreamed that it would be something really, really amazing, that it would have an incredible impact. And it is doing exactly what I dreamed that it would do. What did the identity politics do to you that um, made you feel for so long like that you, because you were from a certain place, believed a certain thing, uh, must identify as a Democrat? And then what is the moment exactly where a message broke through? Well, you know, there, the messages that I got as a gay man were that uh, that I would be supported on the left, that the Democratic Party had my best interest at heart. Now, I became a liberal because I, the messages I received were that, you know, liberals are against racism, liberals are against uh, discrimination based off of gender or sexual orientation. It's debatable whether or not that was ever true, but I can tell you that at this point, it seems to me that the liberal camp is pretty obsessed with uh, hostility towards white people, hostility towards men, uh, demonizing now heteronormativity. So it's actually bec become all of the things that it claimed to fight against at one point. And that was for me the exact uh, point where I said, this, is, this has gone crazy, this has gone too far. I don't wanna be a part of this anymore. They've become everything that I joined them to fight against. Mm. Well, can you give us like a specific moment though? You say crazy, like what do you mean by that? Because you believe, you just kind of explained that, that this was gonna be the party that would represent you best. You found that not to be the case. What specifically happened and then why did you decide to go right then? What, what, what made you decide that the right was the right party for you, so to speak? Well, the politically correct culture and the identity politics did definitely get too out of control for me and it did become a serious problem. But what really was instrumental in my shift was the discovery of how dishonest the media was throughout Donald Trump's campaign and then after the election. And honestly, I didn't really realize that. And I think that a lot of people on the left don't realize that. I think they put a lot of their trust in sources like CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times and any other number of uh, left-wing news sources. but. A friend of mine who's been a lifelong conservative came to me in the most delicate fashion. Uh, she sent me a video showing, because I had gone on Facebook on one of my you know, post-election rants saying, how could middle America vote for a man who had mocked a reporter's disability? You know, what happened to you? And she sent me this video that said, debunking that Trump mocked the disabled reporter. And it was a compilation video, which clearly showed that for literally decades, Donald Trump has used that exact same voice and that exact same gesture numerous times when he was imitating somebody who had been caught in a lie or somebody who was doing something shady or somebody who was groveling. It had absolutely nothing to do with the reporter disability and at that point that kind of sent me on a mission to find out what else weren't they honest with me about and I found the most amazing things for instance a, a video on YouTube where black people who had attended Trump's rally to support him uh, CNN showed up and actually cut them out of the shot of the rally so that it appeared that there were only white people there I, I mean, I went on this long journey of discovering that the media had been so dishonest about so many things about Donald Trump and his campaign and his followers in this uh, effort to 
create a narrative that he's a racist and a bigot and that's, that that's all that his followers all are as well. And that was a huge turning point for me. You know, uh, uh, Brendan, have you experienced any vitriol yet? Have you experienced any backlash? Look at, look at one of Trump's appointees, very good friend of mine, actually, the, the ambassador to Germany, Rick Grinnell, an openly gay man. Rick's a conservative. Well, they tried to attack Rick on many, many things. Then he became, uh, he was confirmed as the ambassador to Germany. The new attacks against Rick are now that he's too conservative. He's too oppressive. The, the German host country is offended by Rick. But you have to think that much of that is due to the fact that he's an openly gay man from Los Angeles who didn't subscribe to liberal dogma. Are you experiencing any backlash like that? Absolutely, yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny for, for a party and an ideology that claims to be so supportive of gay people. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the second that you stray away from uh, the camp, then they start attacking your character. They start attacking your sanity. They started to, I mean, I've been accused of being on drugs. I've been accused of being an alcoholic, active alcoholic. I've been accused of uh, having a nervous breakdown. I mean, you name it. Yeah, anything that they can do to discredit you because they, they want their gay people, they want their black people, they want their racial minorities to be kept thoroughly in line and go along with exactly the ideology. And they don't like it when you don't. Well, speaking of African-American young conservative commentator C.J. Pearson, who happens to be African-American, appears to have joined the movement. On June 30th, he tweeted this, the Democratic Party is the party of slavery, the party of Jim Crow, the party of segregation, the party of the KKK. Democrats walked away from black folks long ago. Now it's our time to hashtag walk away. What advice, because we're running out of time, but real quickly, in the minute that we have remaining, Brandon, what advice would you give people that may be questioning whether or not the party is actually, the, the, the party that he or she belongs to is actually meeting his or her needs? Well, I would tell them that, you know, the, the, gay, the, the gay community in particular is a very small voting base. And at this point, they don't even care about their heterosexual voting base. So they certainly don't care about their gay voting base. I mean, at this point, the party seems to be obsessed with illegal immigrants. That seems to be the only place they put their focus. So I want anybody, you know, racial minorities, LGBT people in America to realize you have a choice. And these people don't really care about you anymore. Let me ask you this. How have you been received among conservatives? I have been received with the utmost warmth and welcoming and tremendous love. And I get literally thousands of messages every day from people who say, we've got your back, we support you, and we love you, and you wa we want you over here with us on the right. Mm, kind of destroys that narrative that uh, <laughs> you heard for all those years that you would never be accepted or, or fought for. Um, certainly yeah, seems like it's absolutely. been a different experience for you. Now, Brandon, you've done an outstanding job, and his movement is hashtag walk away on Twitter, on Facebook. Brandon Shraka, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.